satisfy your need for happiness through your own curiosity with the Ranveer Show. I'm assuming a part of your job is also to kind of give sex coaching. Yes, it is. Could you encapsulate that in five points? For like, what do you usually tell guys? So in, I'll tell you in, in India, especially. Yeah, no, we're talking. Okay, we have so many things, but I'll tell you one. This you just mentioned about men who are worried about their orgasm and the partner's orgasm. So there are couples who come to me and they said that look, uh, I we are trying for a baby and the gynecologist has said that we must have sex on these two days, 14 to 16 days of our period. But during those two days, I can't have an erection. So what is there? So you have to understand that it is a pleasurable act. So when you make a pleasurable act as an act of performance, that means you're taking away the pleasure out of the man. It's pressure. So you're taking away the pleasure. So the glans penis is supposed to get stimulated. It goes to the mind and mind sends the signal for the erection to persist and gets more stimulated. And again, it goes back to the mind and brain and it gets another stimulus to stay erect. But what happens if you are not thinking about that pleasure? So you, are, you say pleasure to bhaar mein gaya. So mm. you are not worried about the pleasure. So, so, so the boy is worried about ovulation, ovulation time, fertilization. So there's no pleasure, no? So mm. he's doing it, performing a duty. So when you take away the pleasure, the performance goes. And then he's into a vicious cycle. So there is a poor performance and then there is a guilt because the woman is going to come out and say, what the hell have you done? You spoiled my evening and you've not been able to fertilize my eggs. Then he goes into depression. And from depression, he then takes some courage and again approaches the woman for sexual activity. But then in the back of his mind, he has pre-performance anxiety. Which happens to a lot. Every guy I've ever spoken to has gone through the situation. So pre-performance anxiety will reduce the performance. And the whole vicious cycle, the four things, the poor performance, guilt, and depression, and pre-performance anxiety, and then poor performance. So it's a vicious cycle. So most of these people come to us like that. We had Dr. Vijayant on the show, uh, on the Hindi version of the podcast. We spoke about this in detail. And the basic outcome was you actually need the partner in this case to be encouraging verbally. Yes. Just say it's okay. And give comfort, give nurturing. Uh, sometimes it even takes a few months for a guy to get out of that anxiety, performance anxiety cycle. Mm -hmm. But once he's out, he's out forever. So you actually need the girl to give verbal cues and say it's okay. Be calm, etc. Is that what you've seen? So in I'll come to this. Sure. So this cycle, vicious cycle, published under my name in 2007, Journal of Sexual Medicine. This is when I published this. So there are two situations when the couple comes to me in this situation. There is a woman who is very harsh. So she's like a principal of the school. And there is a boy who can't answer what is 2 plus 2. Because mm. if he answers wrong, he's going to get a stick. Now tell me, how can this man have erections with this woman in this situation? So you are absolutely right. We need to, in such a situation, counsel the woman. So many times women would understand. But in today's time, I'm talking about 2024, in the last 20 years perhaps, women have changed. They have their rights. They are aware of their rights. Last week only I had a patient in whom the woman said that, look, we are married only for a year. I have the whole life with me. I'm going to divorce him. There are couples who have been together since, say, mid-school, high school. And they never had sex. They get married and the boy is not able to perform and the woman leaves him. Now, you need to find out. So what I do is I put them together and I ask the woman, do you want to patch up or do you want, don't want to patch up? So if you want to patch up, 
the first step is the very first step that I accept is that you have come all the way, taken my appointment, sitting in front of me means that you want to patch up. So if you want to patch up, then we are willing to work. My problem is that you are sitting with me for 15 minutes, but next time you're going to come after a week, but you have one week minus 15 minutes to be with him. So I can't do everything in 15 minutes. I'll take one step. You perhaps have to take 99. So unless you're willing to take those steps, I can't treat you. And this is very important. So this is the counseling to the woman. There are women who will say, okay, I'm willing to do that. There are women who would say, to hell with it. So we have both kinds. You know, all kinds make this work. Apart from this, there is a pharmacological agent that I use. So before I go to the pharmacology, I'm not going to be a proponent of alcohol. But alcohol inhibits the inhibitions. Hmm. Inhibits the inhibitions. So if you ask these couples, the couples that you are talking about, that if they have a drink or two, just a drink or two, they would perform much better. But if they have six drinks, then there's a problem. Mm. That's what the Shakespeare said. Alcohol will increase desire and reduce performance. But first, 30 to 60 ml, it inhibits the inhibitions. And that is exactly what we need. So we need to titrate that. I'm not a proponent of alcohol. But you will see that your friends who can take it, who do take it, tell them to limit the drinks and you see the difference. The second is, we have a pharmacological agent which inhibits the inhibitions. So I use that and it works. So there's a tablet, it's a very cheap tablet. It's actually 1950s old tablet. Nobody uses it these days. I, it's an antidepressant. Nobody uses because we have wonderful antidepressants or R&D and other newer medicals. I use it because it has a side effect that it causes erection. What's the name? Trazodone. So the side effect of this drug is erections. So I use the side effect. So that I'm, is I'm a, visualizing a depressed guy in the 1950s taking an antidepressant and then... <laughs> that is how it was found. <laughs> really? <laughs> yes. If you look at the pharmacology book, so we read what is called Lawrence Pharmacology and there's a story about it. He was this banker who went and reported this. Damn. So we are, we are evolving. So that's how it is. It's kind of sad about like his life and suddenly <laughs> out of the blue, it's like, what? So when I was doing my third year MBBS, when we are taught pharmacology, that was the day I realized that we, I will use this molecule once and I did that and I'm still doing it. Mm. Published it in journal Sexual Medicine 2007. So that's how it is. Yeah. And sometimes I think in situations like that, like I've had so many bros of mine confide in another brother. That's what you do because mm. you don't know who to talk to. Exactly. So a lot of bros come and say, listen, I'm having this issue. In most of the cases, 99% of the cases, the guy is usually anxious about his job. He's an anxious guy in general. That anxiety is making its way to the bedroom. And as a bro, all you tell him is, listen, it happens to every guy. Chill. And it'll be a phase that you'll get past. Just you need your partner to support you. If that partner supports you, you can go through a lot. Exactly. That's the bottom line here. That is the bottom line. The partner has to be important person. I take the fees, I take the credit, but the treatment has to be done by the partner. Very clear. Mm. Um, in India especially, what other kind of sex coaching do you need to give people? Because this problem is actually very common, what we just spoke about. Mm. Uh, performance anxiety. Is performance anxiety the most common? Yes. So I will tell you that, uh, I will give you the history of the what is written in the books. So in 1980s, it was thought, till 1980s, it was thought that 90% of erectile dysfunction, I'm quoting Western literature. 90% sure. of uh, erectile dysfunction is functional. That is this. It means there's nothing wrong with the organ. Mm. And 10% is, there is a problem with the organ. For example, diabetes or something. Which is what we spoke about, the, the pain. That's right. So, diabetes causes probs, sclerosis or fibrosis or obstruction of the blood vessels so that there's no blood supply. It causes inflammation of the nerves so that there is no sensation 
there is no blood supply there is no sensation so organ has to you know it's eventually cannot perform diabetes is basically like it's eating your body from the inside that's right it's a dreadful disease go on so 19 till 1980s the western literature talked about 90% being uh, functional we call it or psycho psychogenic and 10% being organic means there's a problem in the organ and 1980s we started having what is called penial implants so the literature in 2010 would tell you that 90% is organic and 10% is psychogenic that's a western literature so how does it change obviously i'm not blaming anybody but then there are forces which are industry driven and imagine it is easier for me to treat a couple like this by putting an implant rather than trying to convince the lady that you have to be supported please correct me if what i'm going to say is wrong what you effectively saying is there are lots of problems related to sex all those problems boil down to erection or the lack of it in most cases it's actually psychological whether guy is just feeling anxiety what we just spoke about but there's a lot of money to be made in this industry by the pharma companies and by people who make implants therefore they push for research that suggests that if you're having trouble getting an erection you either get an implant or you take a medicine for it is that what you're trying to say absolutely right absolutely so i'm coming to i'll give you a small story sure so i used to go for an after i started my practice i used to go to a place 500 kilometers from new delhi and i used to conduct an opd there and there was a big army cantonment there so one day there was this um, soldier who came and saluted in a very crisp uniform and he said sir i am going on leave tomorrow i said that's very good you should go then this young soldier tells me that sir but i don't have erection i said how do you know are you with your family here he says no my family is back home and i'm going to go and face my wife but i have lost my erections so i said how do you know that you've lost erections so he said i was guarding my commanding officer's luggage on the railway platform and there was this sadhu who was sitting across the railway line and he called me and he held my uh, wrist and told me he he actually palpated my pulse and told me that tera to khada nahi hota means you don't have erections and from that day onwards i stopped having erections now you must understand we were talking about psychogenic and organic in united states if somebody tells a united states army soldier that you are not having erections the first reaction will be he'll punch his face <laughs> in india we are so vulnerable to suggestions by so called sadhus or revered uh, religious people that whatever they say is gospel truth and we are willing to make ourselves vulnerable and accept that suggestion so this is a damage by suggestion a psychological damage which by suggestion so this guy says no sir that sadhu baba has told me it will not happen so it is not happening so give me do something for me otherwise i am going to die because my wife is not going to accept me so coming back to the story of the psychogenic versus organic so we have so many reasons for having psychogenic impotence what did you do for that soldier give him something no no i there are ways so what we do is i talk to him i gave him that tablet called trazodone because i knew that it is just i have to inhibit that negative thought so inhibit the inhibition so inhibition of sex is a negative thought so you inhibit the inhibition and i we this is a test so we put what is called a vasoactive substance and we put it into the penis with a small fine needle inject and he has an erection because this is vasogenic okay. so vasogen you, you did that to him we, i did it so that he sees that it is erect i said look your organ is fine mm. you have absolutely no reason go home and enjoy mm. he smiled saluted and went back that's uh -huh. all he never seen him again 
did he have a boner when he went away <laughs> <laughs> genuine quest like walk no, no we tell them we, they cannot walk out like this they have to masturbate ejaculate and i have to see that the erection has come down because i have created the erection it is my responsibility to see that the erection doesn't last long enough to cause a damage to the organ because persistent erections are causing damage to the organs okay now go on you are talking about the studies yes so i was trying to tell you the the distinction between psychogenic and organic erections so the psychogenic organ uh, erections obviously we in india have lot of issues which create lot of psychogenic erections for example i just talked about suggestion i talk about you know friends talking in the school or college or high school that look you've had a girl you've had a girl you then they tell okay you don't have man you haven't had sex as of now my god you must be useless so this guy becomes useless mm. then he has a guilt that oh my god perhaps i'm not good enough with a woman that's why no girl comes near me near me that that's how it is so he is actually you know he's is drowned in his own guilt and he will never have an erection so he is an kind of introvert in that matter so we have lot of people like that they come to us so many times newly married people with arranged marriage will come the girls parents the four boys parents they're all there four people there two these and uh, when i talk individually to each partner i ask this to the boy what is your what is wrong with you I said sir honestly i can tell you i've never touched a girl and i'm scared to have to touch her and her presence makes me so nervous that i can't have an erection and this is not something that i'm talking about uh, a story this happens more often than you can think of mm. fair so then i have to just tell the girl that you're very lucky to have a boy like this i have to tell the parents that your boy is absolutely fine i'll give him something and he'll be fine no more tests mm. now I coming don't, i don't get how parents get involved in this <laughs> like no they do in india so india is a very unique country i just gave you an example nothing like this can happen in any other country that somebody sitting across a railway line will call you and tell you that you don't have erection you stop having erections mm. so that's a suggestion that we are vulnerable to so what is my practice my practice is very simple so how do you differentiate between psychogenic and organic erections the very simple so if i ask one question that when you wake up in the morning do you have hard ons or not so if you are having hard ons early morning spontaneous erections that means your machine is absolutely fine At you don't have to worry till what age any age so even when you're 50 60 70 you still get hard ons in the morning the frequency decreases a lot depends upon testosterone you cannot decide what is the age at which you will go bald can you have an age no at what age will you have a gray hair do you have age no so it is not like that this is individual so those people who exercise and continue to exercise their testosterone is high so whether it is a male or a female somebody who is a sports person is likely to have a higher sex appetite because the testosterone even in female in that case is high and the role of testosterone in females is sexual activity mm. which not many people know mm. so for example somebody got a viagra for men they say somebody who discovers a viagra for women will be multimillionaire why i just told you to get a woman to bed you have to touch all the points there are so many things so it is difficult to get a woman to arouse so women have an they, they have a slow arousal as compared to men the, there's also an art to it which many guys refuse to learn that's okay but suppose instead of learning that art there is a tablet that you put in okay so that tablet imagine how much it is going to you just have to give that tablet to the woman and she's with you yeah so the point is that there is a different biology but in men if you have erections which are spontaneous which are morning erections then first thing is clear i need no more tests your organ is fine there's only a disconnection between your organ and the brain mm. so basically 
your organ has a mind of its own it will erect but not with your uh, efforts or your wish so it has its own wish and command not it is it's not under your command mm so there's a disconnection and we need to sort that out so we, we sort it out in most cases a psychological that's been that's the underlying right. theme right. here that's right this is such an important conversation because a lot of guys are just going through the same performance anxiety problem a lot of guys without hearing this conversation that it is psychological if you enjoyed today's clip make sure you check out these curated playlists that we've made especially for you related to the subject that was spoken about in this clip